Am I the jerk for giving my brother-in-law notice to vacate? My brother-in-law, who is a 44-year-old male, has been unemployed for over a year and a half and lost his rental back in May. My wife, who is a 32-year-old female, and I, who am a 30-year-old male, let him move in with the stipulation that he would get any job within two months. We almost immediately regretted the decision. His dog bit our cat and dog within the first two weeks because he does not train her. Honestly, he basically ignores her all day. He always creates a disaster in the kitchen. He has cleaned the kitchen maybe 10 times in the last three months, and normally only when we ask. He is also an alcoholic. He drinks half a dozen beers every single day. He also takes a bunch of psychiatric medications and TXC. Finally, he has not found a job. He entered a 15-week coding boot camp so he could force us to let him stay longer. He literally cried crocodile tears to beg us to let him stay six months. Otherwise, he just plays video games all day and night. He is 44 years old, by the way. He has even asked me to apply for jobs for him. I told him I would help him revise his resume and send him a couple of listings, but he had to apply himself. He has also refused to do gig work or work retail food service jobs. His resume is poor. He has gotten fired or laid off from six jobs in eight years, usually because of behavioral issues. He has autism spectrum disorder and ADHD, anxiety, etc. His brothers think he has narcissism, but they all hate each other, so I do not know. Last weekend he freaked out on my wife for asking him to clean a pan after she spent a bunch of time cleaning the kitchen, and he made a mess almost immediately after. Since then, he has been sending her walls of texts with demands not to contact him if she was just going to nag him and called her controlling and a micromanager. I put my foot down and gave him his notice. He signed a week-to-week -week lease with us, so he has to be out soon or I am going to file for ejectment. My wife wants him out too, but feels guilty since he was going to be homeless back in May if we did not let him move in. Am I the antagonist for making him homeless? You are not the bad guy in this situation. Sadly, some people can't be helped, and you deserve your own sanity. If you don't evict him, nothing is going to change, and you'll be stuck in this situation forever. Good on you for helping him, but if he isn't going to help himself, he's just going to cause you and your partner unnecessary grief. Am I the jerk for agreeing with my dad's decision to go on holiday with my wealthy stepsister over my bio-sister? I, a 25-year-old female, have two biological siblings and two stepsisters. My sister, a 27-year-old female, and my stepsister Amelia, also a 27-year-old female, used to be very close in their early teens. However, my sister and I stopped seeing our dad as much during our mid to late teens, causing us to drift apart to the point where we now only speak to each other at family events. My sister got married three years ago. Our dad was not able to contribute as much as she had hoped, so she had to settle for a small wedding that was not exactly her dream wedding. Part of the reason he could not contribute much was that he and my stepmother gave Amelia a £15,000 sterling loan so she could get a master's degree. In our culture, the father pays for the wedding, and our dad knew my sister was looking to get married. Therefore, he should not have given Amelia such a huge loan when she had other options. That was the start of my sister's dislike for Amelia, but things have gotten worse since Amelia's engagement and wedding last year. Amelia's in-laws are wealthy, and her father-in-law decided to give her a blank check for her wedding since her dad is not in the picture. Amelia and my sister have always had similar tastes, so Amelia pretty much had my sister's dream wedding, which has caused my sister to resent her even more. This brings me to the current issue. My sister and Amelia both invited my dad on holiday this summer, and he chose to spend it with Amelia and her in-laws. My sister is understandably hurt and angry over this, but she will not stop talking about it. I think the reason my dad chose to spend it with Amelia is pretty simple. It was a free holiday, and he does not have much disposable income at the moment. On top of that, Amelia is pregnant, so my stepmother would have pushed to spend it with her regardless. Yesterday, my sister brought it up again for the thousandth time, so I told her frankly that I also would have chosen to go on holiday with Amelia if it was an option. To be honest, her in-laws have more money than we will ever earn in our lifetime, and it would be an experience to go on holiday with people who have so much money. I understand it is hard for my sister because she has this rivalry with Amelia, but I do not see her turning down a free holiday. My brother agreed with me, which I think has contributed to how upset my sister is with me now because she does not like that my brother sees our stepsisters the same way he sees us, his biological sisters. Am I the bad person? You are the jerk here OP and a mega one at that. All I heard was money, money, money. Your sister is suffering and you tell her to take it? Wow. Am I the jerk for calling my mom's boyfriend a dumbass? He always does stupid things all the time. He does not respect me or my sister, so I do not respect him. Anyway, my mom wanted me to drive up to a dealership so she could drop her car off and I could pick her up in my car. We get to the end of her driveway and her boyfriend pulls up and starts talking to my mom. I am putting letters in the mailbox, so I did not see him get in my mom's car. Fast forward to when they get there, her boyfriend gets out and I am like, what? My back seat and truck bed are full of every tool and supply imaginable. It has been like that for months because of my job and school. He opens the door to the back seat, and I have a lot of expensive fishing gear back there too. 
The most expensive items are the reels, which are $260 each. I was already sweating bullets because this guy does not care about anyone's belongings. So I get out and go back to the rear passenger door and I say, let me move my stuff. He responds, no jerk here, it is fine. I can manage. I cannot ever argue with him either because my mom defends him no matter what he has done. Then my mom gets in the passenger seat and we drive home. They both complain about how uncomfortable they are on the way home. When we get to the driveway, I let her boyfriend out. While getting out, he knocks out one of my reels with the box around it onto the ground. Without looking back, I knew what happened. He does not say a word except, hold on, don't leave till I get this back in your truck. I was pretty upset and I still am. I would have thought a sorry or my bad or anything like that would have been appropriate. Is that bad of me to say? The box the reel is in is not very thick, and the reel has no bubble wrap or anything to protect it inside. The reel is fine, I have looked at it although the box is a little rough. I then drive my mom and me up to the house and I get out. I called her boyfriend a dumb person while I was looking at the box and the reel. She said, I'm sure it's fine. Don't ever call him that again. And again it was fine, but nobody seemed to care about my stuff. I spent a lot of money on the reel and worked hard for that money. But oh god, if I did something like that, my rear end would be beaten. My mom talked to me when we got inside too, and she just made me feel like I am the problem. I do not know if I am. You behaved properly. Does he disrespect her as much as he disrespects you and your belongings? It's frustrating when he doesn't seem to care about anyone's belongings and never apologizes for anything. It's tough to gauge without knowing the exact ages, but it might be time to consider moving out. Your mom defending him regardless of his actions doesn't help the situation at all. Would I be the asshole for not letting a wedding guest bring a new plus one after their partner passed away? I, a 25-year-old female, am planning our wedding, which is roughly eight months away. We sent out save the date cards about a year ago so that family and friends could plan accordingly. Due to people's work schedules, we thought the sooner, the better for a heads up since the wedding is on a weekday. My fiancé, a 25-year-old male, had invited his mother's closest friends to our wedding. Kim is his godmother, but my fiancé mentioned that it was just a title since he was never that close with her once he entered his 20s. We invited his godmother and her husband, but unfortunately he passed away due to lung cancer this April. Our wedding day will be the first anniversary of his passing. Now, his mother came to us to ask if, since her husband passed and it is his one-year anniversary, the godmother could bring her sister Jen for moral support. At first, we were hesitant, but kind of agreed at the time. Now, for some brief background, my mother-in-law is a very open person. By the third time meeting them, I was already told about their intimate life. I was told that they would have threesomes with the godmother, and when that ended, they included her sister Jen. Long story short, my father-in-law slowly developed feelings for Jen, but my mother-in-law ended that threesome. After the discussion about asking to have Jen be the godmother's new plus one, my fiancé received a text from his father saying, Jen's a gift from your mom. If my father-in-law hadn't shared that, I wouldn't be conflicted, but now I am grossed out and don't really want that energy of them flirting at my wedding and having people being curious. I envision my mother-in-law and godmother dancing all night while my father-in-law and Jen leave early to rekindle their relationship. I know too much about their intimate lives to believe this wouldn't happen, and my mother-in-law would let it pass for her to enjoy the night. I know people grieve differently, and I can't guarantee the godmother will show up, but even my fiancé expressed that while it is an unfortunate event, he doesn't want our wedding to be overshadowed by someone's sadness. We feel bad, but are considering not giving the godmother a plus one because of the weird intentions we perceive from my father-in-law. How do you accommodate people's needs when it's your big wedding day? How do you bring this up with my fiancé's parents? You are the jerk here OP for not having any compassion for someone attending a wedding so soon after losing their spouse. It's baffling to think anyone would be in the mood for inappropriate behavior when they're grieving. What people do in their own hotel rooms isn't your business anyway. Extending the plus one to her was the right thing to do. Am I the jerk for confronting my husband about not doing the laundry? I came home from work today after a long day. He was already home from work, and neither one of us felt like cooking, so I stopped to grab dinner on the way home. I get home, bags in hand, and I walk inside. The dogs are all over me, I'm about to fall over from carrying so much stuff, and I yell, Hey babe, I'm home. Nothing. I come around the corner, and he's on his computer with his headphones on. So, I put everything down. Then I feed the dogs because for some reason he never does. I see that the washer is open and assume that he put the clothes from the washer in the dryer. Nope. So I start throwing clothes in the washer, and as I'm leaning over about to fall in, he finally takes his headphones off and says, Hey babe, listen to this song I made. I turn around to listen to it. He sees the look on my face and says, I don't know if I want to show you now. You're in a mood. At this point I'm upset. He asks what's wrong, so I tell him that I thought he did the laundry when he got home, but apparently not. He then says, Oh, okay? Sure. Get mad about the one thing. You're welcome for your empty sink and the trash being off the back porch. I admit. I didn't notice that he had done that stuff, but honestly, it just made me more upset. We made an agreement after we got married that he would take care of the outside stuff, 
and I would take care of the inside, but somehow, it's turned into me doing everything. The trash that he took? It's been sitting there for a month and we live in the country, so animals have ripped into the bags. I have asked him multiple times to take it because it was attracting critters and loads of bugs, and now he decided to take it. Yes, I'm grateful that it's finally gone, but I'm also frustrated that it didn't happen sooner and that it seems like he wants to be put on a pedestal for doing the bare minimum. I'm honestly at my wit's end because on the one hand, I'm thankful that he finally did something around the house, but I'm also upset that after he does one thing, he thinks it's enough and then gets upset when I expect more from my marriage partner. I feel bad for saying something to him about it, and I don't really know who is in the wrong here. So, am I the jerk? You have done nothing wrong. He wants a pat on the back for finally doing something he agreed to do all along, and it's clear you're feeling taken for granted. It's time for a solid heart-to-heart -to, -heart to redraw the lines of your original agreement and make it clear he needs to keep up his end. If he continues to resist, ask yourself if this amount of frustration is worth being in this relationship. Am I the jerk? I threw something out that didn't belong to me then lied about it. So, I'll be as brief as I can, but context is important here. My mom has two terminal illnesses and is in the final stage of both. In her house lives the rest of my family, my younger brother Alex, his fiancé Mary and my elder brother Matt. Matt pays for about 80% of all bills. My mom pays what she can, but most of her money is for medical needs. Alex takes care of mom and Mary does a lot of the chores. My primary concern was to take care of and hang out with mom and do anything I can to ease the burden on everyone. As soon as I got there it was obvious everyone was stressed out. It affected how they treated mom too. No one was appreciating what each other was doing, and they were more or less at each other's throats. So I got a list of chores and did what I could for the week. I first had a family meeting of sorts, telling everyone they needed to respect the effort everyone was making because they were not. They agreed. So I then did what I could to make space because with four people and four dogs, the space was a little cramped. I focused on making space. There was a big box containing a swing chair, so I decided to build it. This is where problems began. Now, Alex has about $80,000 worth of metal in his back from a surgery. He is the one most likely to use this chair. He just wanted to have one. Mary told me she bought this chair solely to use one of the support rods as an exercise bar and told me where to find it. I got to building and did some yard work while I was out there. About an hour into building it, Alex came outside. He told me Mary wanted me to leave that support rod loose so she could take it off whenever to use it. I knew her. She would never put it back and it does not come off easily anyway. So I said that's really dumb and I went inside to tell her I was not building it poorly and risking someone getting hurt. Alex's spine is not something I want to take a shock from a fall, nor any guests who might use it. If mom used it and fell, she would likely die. Mary responded, well, if someone gets hurt it'll be her fault and she'll own up to it. I replied that fault was not the issue. Someone getting hurt was. She refused to buy an actual exercise bar. I went back out and stared blankly at the swing, trying to figure out some way to make this work. Matt got home, saw I was stressed, and asked what was wrong. I told him what was up and he said, absolutely not, I'll throw it out. He said since he pays the bills, it is his rules. I was not a fan of that, as it would just immediately put everyone at each other's throats again. He would not let it be used. I felt terrible, I just wanted to help and got stuck between two people who would not make concessions. My options were basically that someone might get hurt, or everyone would get upset with each other again. So I decided to say there were missing parts, and it could not be built. Worth noting, Mary gave one of my mom's chairs away, figuring she would be dead soon and it did not matter. I did not find out about that until later. Looks like another family meeting is in order. Amy should probably buy an exercise bar or deal with what's there. If the chair isn't built right, no one should be using it. Mary definitely needs a reality check though. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.